Okay, so I'm quickly running out of daylight and I want to get through five things for you very quickly. Um, if you hear noises in the background, that's just my little one playing. He's right next to me. He may peek at us later, but don't worry about that. Um, so my name is Philomena. Um, I am a mom. I am soon to be officially an English teacher here in Japan. Um, and I know that a lot of people who come over here, especially for teaching engagements, are single, right out of college, they don't have any kids. Uh, but I don't want you to think that this adventure should be a thing that families can't do. Um, whether you're moving over to start a new career, or you're just coming for a vacation, Japan is a wonderful place for kids. Um, whether you're American, Canadian, European, Australian, whatever, um, there's a lot that your child can get out of a trip to Japan. So I just wanted to really quickly give you five pieces of advice um, that I would give you from my month or so long experience here running my kids all over the Tokyo metro area. All right, so first and foremost, teach your kids single file. Teach them the concept of single file, teach them to understand what it means, and teach them to move very quickly into it once you announce, hey, single file. Uh, the reason for this is many. Um, you're going to do a lot of walking. There's a lot of people. There is a lot of people, especially if you're in the Tokyo area or any big city. Um, and there are going to be people on bicycles because most people don't drive. And as a result of that, you're going to be walking somewhere. You're going to need them to move out of the way of a coming bicycle. Now, I don't think I've ever run into a situation so far where anybody has been like about to run over my kids. But in order to not be a hassle, to make things more convenient, and to make it less scary for the kids as they're wandering about, um, giving them the comfort of knowing single file and what it means and that how it means basically that now mommy is the one who will get hit by the bike and not kids, um, it makes it a more enjoyable experience to be walking around. And it makes it more polite for those people that you're going to be interacting with. Get your kids ready for Japanese food. Um, there are lots of options for you available. Um, there are McDonald's at every train station I've been to in the Tokyo metro area. That might not be true if you're farther afield. I can't vouch for that. But don't rely on Americanized food. Otherwise, you're missing half of the joy. So to get kids ready for what might be something different and exotic and scary to them is by preparing them ahead of time. So what we did is about six or more months before we came over here, we changed our diet. We incorporated rice meals over rice. We introduced tofu. We ate a lot of sushi. Um, to get them used to the flavors and the textures that were very common here so that it wouldn't be quite as shocking. Um, now, you're probably not gonna be able to do at home the way it's going to taste here, but that's okay. Uh, the idea is getting them used to fish and getting them used to fish flavors. Uh, this is a particular sticking point for us. Um, uh, a lot of a lot of their soups and that sort of thing will have a, a fish base to them. So if you're not used to that, it's going to everything's going to taste a little funny. Not everything, but plenty of things. Um, one thing that we found, if you want to look up uh, damburi, which is like a beef bowl, and it's delicious cooked beef and soy sauce with onions put over rice. There's literally beef bowl places everywhere. Whereas I said, don't rely on Western food and McDonald's and so on. Don't necessarily like avoid yeah. it entirely. Remember your kids are going to have stress. They're going to deal with the stress of travel in their own ways. Sometimes just giving in that little bit and giving them the, the meal that they really think they want is enough to bring down the stress level and space. Okay, space matters. Um, especially if you're bringing an American kid who is used to wide open ranges to Japan, um, everything is small. Uh, everything is tight. Um, all the spaces for movement are very close together. And so they may feel, uh, even if they can't express it, they may feel a level of frustration at not having the space to run around and flail and, and, and flail their arms about. Um, that's very normal, that's very rational. On the upside, uh, there are playgrounds Everywhere. Public playgrounds, no big deal. Take your kids out. It's the same playground equipment that you're used to. There's nothing strange or scary there. Um, and it's it, therefore it will be familiar for them, which is... 
beneficial for their stress levels. Seeing other little kids who do the same things that they do is beneficial for your child. Seeing that people who don't look like them, don't speak the same language, don't have the same religion or practices, and live somewhere very far away, seeing that they love going down a slide just as much as your kids do, benefits your kid a great deal. So, casual profanity, it's a thing. Um, you and I know the big words that you, we try to avoid saying around our kids. Um, depending on your teaching parenting style, that might not be a big deal for you. Uh, my husband and I, we use profanity around the kids and we've simply taught the kids that language has different usages and there, there are grown-up words and that there are kid words and that kids can't use grown-up words. If you are more traditional in your use of profanity around your kids and protecting them from profanity, you may run into situations where people are casually profane around them. This is not because they want to be insulting, this is just because the word doesn't mean that much to them. So I'll tell you a quick story about casual profanity. Uh, we were up in Akihabara and we were looking for a very specific address, uh, something to do with his Gundam toys. Uh, and we didn't know how to find the address because addresses are very different in Japan. Well, we were looking at our cell phone, we were pointing, we were discussing, and a gentleman came over. Uh, he was willing, happy, and incredibly helpful. We ended up finding the location thanks to him. But it was a little tricky to find, even for a native. And so he was looking at his cell phone, he was looking at my husband's cell phone, they were talking back and forth. And uh, in the course of this, he said the F word. He said it very casually. Uh, as if one would say, gosh darn, um, because the word didn't have the same gravity to him that it has to you and I in the U.S. or in other countries where that word is particularly profane. Um, it was casual, it was no big deal, he wasn't trying to be insulting, it was just a word that you say when you're frustrated. His understanding of English was, this is a word that you use when you're frustrated. And it was appropriate, it was an appropriate usage, just maybe not an appropriate scenario because there were kids involved. Now, we didn't have a problem with it, obviously, and as I said, my kids, they don't repeat those words, they don't care about those words, it's not a big deal. But if you are the sort of parent who is going to protect their ch child from that kind of language, um, and, and you yourself may be shocked by that kind of language, it's just good to know it's never out of malice, it's never with an intention to insult uh, or to be shocking. It is almost always because they don't have the same weight and gravity. There's a couple of uh, v bloggers, um, J bloggers actually, who have um, talked about this specific topic and I'll try to throw some links in the bottom about that if I can. So attention, okay? Um, your kids are going to get attention everywhere you go. Uh, now you would already get a little bit of attention as you go around because you're very different Assuming, I mean, you know, if you're a Japanese American or a Japanese Canadian, it's going to be a different thing for you. But for, for those of us who are decidedly visibly gaijin, um, your kids are going to draw attention. Uh, and it's going to be a great deal of attention, and it's just something that you have to accept and just deal with. Um, it is good for your kids to have little old ladies come up and try to talk to them and say sweet things to them and get them to say sweet things back. Because... Again, this is a way of showing your kids that, well, okay, this lady doesn't look anything like grandma, and she doesn't say any of the words that grandma says, but she loves me the same way that grandma does because I'm a cute kid. Well, that means she's just like grandma. And that is a memory that your child will carry forward when they are putting your make makeup on in front of a camera. No, when that is an idea that your children will carry forward for the rest of their lives, that the difference between people is not so dramatic as we might think. Um, the downside to this, I guess, might be that if you are at a restaurant, uh, if you are trying to have some private family time in a public venue, you may not be afforded that. Uh, it's not out of, again, it's not out of malice, it's not because they want to drive you crazy, it's because simply it is a different environment, you are possibly the most unique thing they've seen in years, maybe, maybe not, but especially around Tokyo. But. Um, and they may just find your kids especially attractive because they look a little bit different. I have, um, you know, little blonde hair, blue eyed babies, so we get no end of uh, conversations with, with, with older people, with other kids. I look at it as an opportunity to socialize, uh, to practice our language skills, and to otherwise just remember that everybody, deep down inside, they're all just people, and people love kids, and people love puppies, and people love sunshine. So, 
um, look at it for the benefits that it, it can be. Um, be prepared for the downside of that. Uh, I may have more of these going forward, but as of right now, that would be, I say, my top five things to prepare if you're going to bring your kids to Japan. All right, thanks so much.